Hello and welcome Exiles. I want to showcase and give you a sneak peek on the build I'm working on, I'm excited about, and I wanted to do hopefully multiple updates on this character as I go throughout it. I definitely want to invest quite a bit and take it to a fairly high extent in terms of power. Now, this build came with a life lesson, and the life lesson is one I've learned a couple times, which is you can't invest into too much things that are fun or basically different varieties of stuff in your build if they pull in different directions because it's going to sacrifice a lot of power. Basically, the simplest way to put this is, say you have a build, which is what I have here, that wants to have fun explosions and the auto bomber feel, but then you also want to scale your main spell skill while also scaling auras, while also scaling defense. You start having a lot of pieces where if you're trying to do all these things well, it, uh, it becomes too spread out and you start doing some of them just okay or some of them not well at all. And <clears throat> you basically have to say, okay, me trying to do this is making everything else worse because of it and you have to drop that from the build you have to let it go the dream didn't really match up to what you thought it could do and for me that was heralds i wanted to do herald of ice and herald of thunder with a decent amount of investment i have this multi-link helmet and i have these or or the or is these these heralds that are taking up reservation space and i wanted to make use of them in a build that is pretty stretched thin on doing so many different things. I'm scaling up to about 100% aura effect. I'm scaling a ton of defense. I'm scaling to 90 max all res. I'm scaling a lot of different areas of the build. I'm scaling attributes. It's pulling in a whole bunch of different directions. And for one, Heralds is just one too many directions. The reason being is the opportunity cost of these is way too high. They make the clear feel better. They make the build more fun. But ultimately, I'm sacrificing, I could run both Wrath and Zealotry in this build, a build with 100% aura effect, which if you run some quick numbers, that's basically doubling my damage. I'm sacrificing two auras, which would double my damage, to run things that aren't really helping my damage much at all. Not only that, but there's the additional part of I'm sacrificing gem setups, and I, like I could go and get... Um, Oh, Flame Dash, which right now I have to switch out for Assassin's Mark if I want to do single target, so I'm giving up a gem slot there. I'm giving up another gem slot, which could be Smite, another damage aura, which would be another, you know, 30, 25% more damage, something like that, if I included it in the build. There's a lot of power in gem slots. Not only that, but I'm sacrificing a ring slot for the Storm Secret ring. I'm sacrificing a helmet, which could have good stats like Strength and Int like uh, mana reservation. There's a lot of good stats I could have on a helmet, but I'm sacrificing a lot of those stats to get uh, extra links for these Herald skills. So there's this huge opportunity cost. My hope was the build would feel good enough in terms of like clear and fun where the things would be exploding, but the explosions aren't good enough because I really haven't fully invested into Herald of Ice or Herald of Thunder because I have all this other investment going. You know, it's pulling in all these different directions. So moral of the story is, I'm gonna showcase what it looks like now with this current Herald setup. But I'm going to be upgrading this from here and basically changing the setup so that way you guys can see, okay, next video, I've swapped out of these things, I've swapped into these auras, you'll see the difference in how much that opportunity cost was to the build. Because I'll, I'll showcase another like Elder Guardian, I guess today I'll do, I'll do Baron, and I'll showcase how fast we kill him, and then I'll make these changes to the build with the next video, and I'll showcase, hey, this is the difference in this opportunity cost. This is how much better the build gets when we don't spread it too thin. Now... Sorry for the soap opera or soapbox or whatever I was doing, but let's get into what is this character? What am I doing? So the main thing we're building around is Ivory Tower. I love this unique for how much energy shield it can give you. The unfortunate thing is it's built around you not being able to reserve your mana pool. That's the big downside of this item. You get to reserve life and get a bunch of ES, but the downside is you can't reserve your mana pool. The mana pool is super powerful. I don't want to give that up. So in order to not give up the mana pool so I can reserve more auras, because auras are powerful with the Guardian build, I, the way I have it set up, the way I do that is Coruscating Elixir. Now you'll notice this flask has been going pretty much this entire video so far. And the way I'm doing that is with the Trader Keystone. This actually is quite low cost investment for me to put into the build because if you saw my Guardian build from last league, I was already using a Brutal Restraint for getting aura effect and dex into the build. So it's giving us a lot of value and just one extra passive point and we can fit in Coruscating Elixir. If you don't have two flasks, Coruscating Elixir, it's not gonna have perfect sustain, but it will last several minutes before it falls off and you're gonna get flash charges throughout a boss fight. So if you have the reuse at 
the end of the flasks effect and you just click that at the beginning of each map it will last the entirety of the map you're not gonna have any issues with it there's very little investment the main investment we're losing is two flash slots we trade two flash slots and one passive point to get an entire mana pool of reservation which i think is really powerful in combination with the ivory tower we also get to do something else which is really powerful which is we get to use flasks to cap our resistances. Now in this jewel, I told you, I said, I have 90 max all res. I still need to fix my fire res, but the reason I can do that is because of melding of the flesh. Now, you know, you guys know this jewel, it makes it so, where do I have it? I have it right here, melding of the flesh. It gives you minus 70 all res. That makes our resistances pretty tight. The good news is if we always have a ruby flask up, that's 50 fire res. And then we can also, with that same key, keystone, keep 100% uptime on our bismuth flask which gives us about 70 res yeah about 70 all res so it pretty much counteracts the whole downside of the melding of the flush jewel so that's the kind of the idea here if i have these things in the build i can sustain them fully and we're going to have basically a lot of res to work around melding of the flesh work around our auras that's kind of the building mechanics we're working with the other things we're working with is ashes of the star i think this amulet is super powerful and super strong and the best stat on this amulet, I really think, is the quality stat. The plus one gems, that's really strong too. The reservation of skills, that's really strong. But the quality stat, in my opinion, takes the cake. There is so much value you can get out of quality, just, just going over small things. Uh, on this alternate quality assassin's mark, that's an extra 6% enemies... 6% extra damage enemies are taking. Just looking at our defiance banner, it gives us another... 15% armor and evasion onto the stats of Defiance Banner. Normally, Defiance Banner will say something like 60% increased armor and evasion, but this one says 74. So when you have that much armor and evasion and you have a 100% aura effect, this makes a big difference in how much armor we get. Just to show you how powerful Defiance Banner is, you'll see we're 100k armor right now. If I drop Defiance Banner, all of a sudden we go to, if I could click it, uh, we go to 60k. That's giving us 40k. That's how strong Defiance Banner is, and a big part of how strong it is, is this amulet giving it quality. Another thing that gives us a lot of power, say we have Alternate Quality Righteous Fire. That's another 30% damage that we do, wouldn't have without the quality. I mean, the list goes on and on. It applies to so many things. It applies to all your Alternate Quality Gems. Discipline, for example, gives percent damage. That gets scaled by Aura Effect. There's a whole bunch of things we get, a whole bunch of value we get just from the quality, and I really think it's an amazing stat. And there are some Alternate Qualities which are insanely strong for certain builds. I mean, we're using Phantasmal lightning tendrils which is a pretty big alt quality um it has diminishing returns of course at a certain quality i think 47 percent quality is the peak and then it will begin to actually downscale your damage it has a curve but point is there's a whole bunch of value from quality so i'm using ashes as a star because of that not to mention the other stats which are also nice and then some other things we are incorporating is scaling strength and intelligence which is something we couldn't do before to get crit via the um righteous the righteous providence jewels i think righteous providence is one of the best crits nodes nodes on in the game to scale crit and that's what we're using exactly for it's helping our build get a bunch of crit chance into the build where we previously would have none it'd be very hard for us to do all these different things we're trying to do in the build and then have crit on top of it but if we can sacrifice two jewel sockets, get Righteous Providence, we all of a sudden have a scaling metric that works in synergy with Ivory Tower, with Guardian Scaling Life and ES and Armor, and it all just kind of melds together and it works very well. So hopefully I've described basically the baseline of what this character is doing. Some other key mechanics are, you'll notice I have Righteous Fire and Left Click. The reason this is, is Core Scaling Elixir puts your life to one, which will deactivate Righteous Fire. We use, a Doriani's Lessons to have Life Leech, which means whenever we're fighting enemies, that one life will go back to 20 because we're using Zelto, so we don't have any life regen because it's applying to our ES, so we need a way to get it, so we have Life Leech. We'll get the life back, and then as I'm moving around, Righteous Fire will reproc, so I don't have to think about it. So, anyways, hopefully that gives you kind of a, a gist of what we're doing with this build, why I'm excited about. Now I'll go ahead and I'll do a Maven Enhanced um, uh, Baron, just to showcase you what the build looks like with the Heralds. Currently, um, I just made an upgrade from a 5 link with the 5 link with no plus 2. The damage was kind of meh. It was not okay. I just upgraded to a plus 2 and a 6 link. So I guess we'll see how this damage looks. I haven't done it before. And you'll see if I don't have the flask um, basically on, 
Righteous Fire will tell me right away. The second I enter a map, it'll always remind me, hey, turn on your Ruby Flask before you start mapping because it'll delete your ES, which works great for me because I'm really good at forgetting things. So if I'm constantly reminded every time I enter a map to just turn on the flask, then it's good to go and it'll last the entire flat, the entire map now. So I don't have to worry about it anymore. So you can see like the Herald of Ice definitely is improving the clear. The Herald of Thunder is definitely improving the clear, but the, it's not killing things. It's not shattering screens. It's not like I can just shield charge around and just auto bomb. It's clearly still necessary for me to have a skill to destroy things, to kill things, right? We can't just get away with only those Heralds and being an auto bomber because we have too much scaling in other places, meaning the Heralds just aren't going to be good enough. You know, we've spread ourselves too thin. All right, so let's go ahead and just move our way towards wherever the, uh, wherever the uh, boss may be. I forgot I meant to have Assassin's Mark on my middle mouse so I can use that when I get to a boss fight or when I get to Baron <clears throat> so right now the build feels fairly good but ultimately um, like I said before we are we have invested into the heralds and I think after playing them I thought they were gonna be fun enough going into it or strong enough going into it that it would be worth the damage loss but after playing it it's pretty clear to me it's not worth the damage loss because it's still necessary that I'm hitting monsters, that I'm attacking monsters myself, and we don't get that benefit, right? So we still obviously need the power from things like the, uh, oh, what's it called? Things like actually scaling into what we have scaling for. We already have 100% aura effect. We should probably be using that. We should probably be getting wrath. We should probably be getting zealotry. Those sorts of things are all going to be super powerful for me. So I shouldn't be forgoing them. I shouldn't be not doing them. Put this in the corner if we can, actually. Oh, I messed that up. Mistakes were made. But yeah, right now you can see the damage is clearly like acceptable. We can do the fight, we can tank all the things. Oh, I should mention this is a Aegis build. In case you guys haven't noticed, I'm a little bit addicted to Aegis. And right now with 100K armor, 10K ES, 90 max all res, we're gonna be very, very tanky. Now one thing you might've noticed is we have minus 52 chaos res. We're gonna fix this because I'm gonna be swapping our shield, our ring, our helmet, our gloves. We're gonna be picking up a lot of chaos res and it should result in this build being Close to effectively immortal, mortal. I think this build should be able to tank pretty much every single heavy hit boss hit in the game. We'll see when I actually get everything set up all said and done. But that's kind of the update for this character, where, what I'm working with, what I'm doing. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I hope you'll enjoy the follow-up video when I've actually made these improvements to the build that I think will be such a big improvement. And you can see for yourself whether or not I'm crazy and I don't know what I'm talking about or whether I do know what I'm talking about and the opportunity cost is high here. And I was just being... Uh, a little bit dreaming, you know, out there in the clouds when I thought, yeah, I can fit in auras or I can fit in heralds. It'll be worth it. You know, it clearly probably wasn't in my mind. So that's the video. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.